Welcome back, players. I'm Jack with 3-6 Cancel, and this is Coco the Wise Cat, and it's time once again to venture into deeper waters as we try to get better at Wise Fours. Today's lesson is about a topic that a lot of people ask questions about, and that's side attacking. When should I side attack? How does side attacking even affect soul damage? And what is side attacking? Well, today we're going to take a deep, long dive into side attacking and hopefully get some answers to these questions. At the very least, I can guarantee that you'll know what side attacking is and how it works according to the rules of Wise Fours, because that's how we're going to start. Then, after we talk about the concrete stuff, we'll move into some of the benefits and drawbacks of side attacking to help you make decisions during gameplay. And finally, we'll show some examples where side attacking might be a good idea to give you a little context. So without further ado, let's get started. In Wise Fours, whenever you choose a character in your center stage to make an attack, you declare what kind of attack you're making. This can either be a direct attack, a front attack, or a side attack. By the way, you do have to declare what kind of attack you're making before anything else in the attack step happens, so you can't use abilities related to attacking until you say whether this is a front, side, or direct attack. Now, this hinges on whether or not the character you choose to make the attack with has a character facing them on the opposite stage position on your opponent's stage. If the space on that stage is empty, your character will always be making a direct attack, which adds an extra soul to their damage. However, if your character is facing an opponent's character, you have two options. You can either 1. Declare a front attack, where the two characters will compare powers after your opponent takes or cancels their damage, or 2. Declare a side attack and avoid that battle between characters at the price of taking a penalty to how much damage you'll do to your opponent. And this penalty is soul minus level. When you declare a side attack, whatever soul your character is carrying at the time of damage will be decreased by the level of the character they're side attacking around. So, for example, let's say I'm attacking with Yoko here. She has 2 soul, and I've got a 1k1 climax in my climax zone. So right now, she has 3 soul, and I declare a side attack against this level 2 character. Yoko's soul will be decreased by 2, so right now her 3 soul is decreased to 1 soul. If I trigger an additional soul, this will increase to 2 soul. In another example, if I'm attacking with this level 0 Nia with 1 soul, and I declare a side attack against this level 1 character, she'll have 0 soul. If I don't trigger any additional soul, my attack is for 0 and my opponent doesn't have to check for any damage. Lastly, if I declare a side attack with Kamina, who currently has 2 soul, against the level 3 character and I trigger no additional soul, he has minus 1 soul. Anytime a character has negative soul, it's treated the same as having 0 soul, and my opponent doesn't have to check for any damage, but he also doesn't heal. Nothing else exciting happens as a result of having negative soul, aside from your character being at risk of suddenly becoming a ginger. Remember players, a side attack means soul minus level, soul minus level. Even experienced players sometimes have trouble remembering how this works, so don't worry if you're still working on getting it down. Now before we go further, a few notes about the rules of side attacking. Once you declare a side attack, the soul deducted from that attack based on the opposing character's level is deducted right away, and this won't change no matter what happens to the opposing character during the attack's subphase. Also, when a side attack is declared, the counter step and battle step are completely skipped, so backups and counters cannot be played. Though interestingly, the character you're signing against still becomes the character being attacked according to the rules. This may seem like a distinction without a difference, but consider Kamina from earlier. He has an ability that says when you use his climax combo until the end of your opponent's next turn, when he's attacked, if you have two or less cards in memory, he goes to memory. Because he's still a character who's being attacked, even in the event of a side attack made against him, you can still activate that ability. But of course, if for some reason he didn't go to memory during a side attack, I couldn't back him up either as there's no counter step. There's no battle step either, so a character that side attacks won't compare power with the character facing it, and it will not become reversed even if the character facing it has much higher power. This obviously means that no abilities that happen during the battle phase can be used either. Finally, it should be noted that the minus X soul a character gets when side attacking for its opposing character's level lasts until the end of turn. So while this isn't permanent, if for some reason the side attacking character would stand and attack again, it retains the soul penalty it incurred from side attacking the first time for its second attack, and it can receive it again should another side attack be made. Alright, so now that we have the rules of side attacking down, let's talk about some costs and benefits of side attacking to help you make that choice when you're faced with it during gameplay, as well as some side effects that can be both good and bad depending on your game state. We'll start with the pros. One of the most obvious benefits to side attacking is that your opponent becomes unable to play backups or counter events because there's no counter step, and this is often about more than losing a character to a backup. There are plenty of counters that have other harmful effects to you, 
from resting one of your characters to preventing a character from dealing damage or even dealing damage back to you. If you know your opponent is running cards with effects like these, side attacking denies them the ability to use them during that battle. Second, another pro is that side attacking denies your opponent any on-reverse abilities that their characters have. For example, my combined Gurren Logan has an ability that whenever it reverses a battle opponent, that I can pay one and pitch one to deal a damage, and since it doesn't specify otherwise, I can activate it on my opponent's turn too. So if my opponent sides against it, I can't use that. Finally, another positive that comes from side attacking is that you deal less damage if you side attack against characters that aren't level 0. But Jack, wouldn't that be a negative? Well, not always. There are times in Weish Wars that you actually want to deal less damage per attack, and when we move into examples of why you might side attack, we'll talk about why that is. But before that, let's move into the costs of side attacking. The first and most obvious one is that you'll be dealing less damage on average. And yes, I just said that there are some times when this can be desirable, but for the most part, keeping your soul is more beneficial than not, just ask Mark Zuckerberg. So you need to consider carefully when this can actually help you instead of just hamper your ability to kill your opponent. The second cost is that you're not actually killing your opponent's characters or making them expend resources to defend them. Now, you win Weish Wars by dealing damage to your opponent, not killing their characters, and in most cases, you should prioritize the former instead of the latter when you have choices to make. However, Weish Wars is still a card game where resources, card advantage, and all those other topics I'm too stupid to understand matter, and by not killing your opponent's characters, you're still helping them out in a small way. Finally, another cost of side attacking is that you deny yourself any on reverse abilities your cards might have. There are plenty of characters that do things when they reverse a battle opponent, and this often nets you some sort of advantage. Side attacking obviously denies you any of that, so consider it carefully if you're thinking of side attacking with one of those characters. Okay, so there are some basic pros and cons of side attacking. There can be others based on your game state, but those are the big ones. But there are some other side effects to consider. Namely, your characters will still be alive when your opponent has their next stand phase and goes to take their turn. Now, it's easy to think that this is a good thing and would be a pro, but consider the following. If you're side attacking against your opponent's character, it's likely that they could beat you in a battle. Further, your opponent can always move their characters around and play over the ones they already have on their turn. So it's unlikely that even if you think you're saving your characters by side attacking, that they'll be alive to stand on your next turn. Unless, of course, you encore them, which is sometimes the right call. However, your characters being alive during your opponent's turn, even if they don't survive to your next turn, has the added effect of denying your opponent direct attacks, meaning that they'll be swinging for less soul on their turn. And this can be both good and bad for you, again, depending on the game state and your compression. So now that we've talked about the obvious pros and cons, as well as some things that can be both good and bad, depending on the situation you're in, we'll dive into some examples of why you might side attack based on what we've learned. So let's look at some situations where side attacking can be beneficial. Example 1. Controlling your damage. So we know that side attacking decreases your soul by the level of the character facing your attacker. This can sometimes be beneficial. Yes, dealing more damage in the form of having higher soul may kill your opponent faster. However, the more damage you're swinging for, the more cards your opponent reveals, and the higher the chance they may reveal a climax and cancel the damage, therefore taking none at all. That's why dealing 2 damage for 3 attacks versus 4 damage for 3 attacks actually has a better chance to net you more total damage at the end of the turn, in most situations. It's a bit counterintuitive, but it's all about the odds of your opponent cancelling, which again has a lot to do with their compression, a subject we covered in an earlier video. Side attacking lets you control these numbers a bit more to work those odds to your advantage. Take this game state. I have a level 3 character that I can attack my opponent with, facing a level 2 character that I can easily reverse. My character has 3 soul right now, and I might trigger a 4th. However, my opponent is at level 3 and has 6 cards in his clock. I only need to deal 1 damage to him to end the game. So instead of front attacking and dealing 3, potentially 4 damage, it would be smart of me to side attack, taking a penalty of 2 for the level of the opposing character to my 3 soul, and instead swinging for 1, maybe 2 damage if I trigger. This effectively halves or more my opponent's chance of cancelling and living for another turn. Pro tip, if you ever find yourself facing a board where you have the option of side attacking for this reason in one lane, it's often prudent to save that lane for your final attack so that you can get the most out of that choice based on what happened during your other attacks. Now, it's often not that straightforward. Another example of this may be if my opponent is very well compressed and I might have a tough time sticking anything above 2 damage. However, I might have a climax combo that gives me advantage when my characters attack, and friends attacking might really hamper my ability to do damage. Alternatively, I could be in a situation where my opponent has a lot of cards in their clock, and just 2 or 3 cards left in their deck. 
If I side attack for less damage, I can make sure that they have to level up, thus putting all of those damage cards back into their refresh deck when they have to shovel back up, and greatly hurting their compression for when I make future attacks. So there are plenty of scenarios where less is more, and you can swing for less damage by siding. Alright, moving on, we'll go to example 2. Avoiding backups and counters. Weish Force is full of counters and backups, many of which can really throw a wrench in your game plan. During the course of gameplay, when you sift through your opponent's waiting room, as you should, you may see one of these backups or events. And since the counter step is skipped during a side attack, declaring a side attack stops those pesky cards in their tracks. And one of the most prevalent cards of this type are anti-change backups. If you happen to be playing one of those popular characters we call early plays, you know, the ones that get minus one level in your hand if you meet certain conditions, well, you're vulnerable to the also popular anti-change backups that say you can choose one of your opponent's characters with level higher than theirs and make them go away somehow. And one of the best ways to avoid walking into this obvious trap with your early plays is to side attack, thus denying your opponent the opportunity to take away one of your attackers. Pro tip. Most anti-change backups allow the user to choose any target, regardless of what character they use the actual backup or counter on. So if you're making an attack with one of your characters that isn't vulnerable to that sort of thing, your opponent can still anti-change any one of your characters even during that battle. And anti-changes aren't the only troublesome backups and counters. There are also rest counters and anti-damage counters, which, when used during the counter step, can be the difference between winning and losing the game. So if you know your opponent is packing these, remember that some damage, even if less than a front attack, is better than no damage at all. But I think we've driven this point home enough. Let's move to example number 3. Side attacking with characters that shine on your opponent's turn. In Vice Force, there are many cards that have abilities that are only active during either your turn or your opponent's turn, and there are some that become absolute monsters if your opponent has to deal with them on their turn when they move to their attack phase. Take this Maple for example. A moment between the two Maple is only 500 power and has an act ability where you can pay one and send her to the waiting room to top check four for a character. But with that measly amount of power, it's unlikely that she could survive even the tamest of battles, much less survive until your next turn to use that act ability and be an attacker. However, during your opponent's turn, this 500 Maple, which is the smallest a level zero can get, is boosted by 4000 power, making her bigger than some level ones. So if you find yourself facing down a full field on your opponent's stage, side attacking with Maple can have some decent payoff. Now Maple is an obvious example, but there are plenty of cards and combinations of cards that fit this idea. Take Day Day Live for example. Some of the best and hardest to deal with cards from this amazing set, like this 1-0 school uniform Toka that not only gives one of your characters plus 1500 at the start of your opponent's turn, but also lets you top check if you reverse a battle opponent during your opponent's turn, combined with other abilities that Day Day Live has, like the Brainstormer that gives a character plus 1k boosts across turns by bouncing, makes it a true nightmare to deal with during your opponent's turn. So there are definitely times where even if you can't beat out an opponent on your turn, their turn will be a different story. This is also true for cards that have defensive abilities, like Priestess from Goblin Slayer, which at the start of your opponent's attack phase, with her climax combo, gives all of their characters minus one soul. But if she's reversed on your turn, that doesn't do as much good, does it? And being an early play herself, she's also open to anti-change. So siding with her, if you want that ability to work on your opponent's turn, is sometimes the way to go. Now moving into the last example, there was one thing we mentioned during that last section, which is side attacking against level zeros. You see players, since side attacking incurs a penalty of soul minus level, level zeros obviously have no power to impact your soul damage if sided against. So when we're weighing the costs and benefits, most of those costs go out the window if you're facing a level zero battle opponent. The example I used before of a moment between the two maple is another solid example of why side attacking against a zero can carry a lot of benefits. Granted, most of the time you consider siding against a level zero is during the level zero game, and many level zero characters carry abilities that can greatly benefit from this. Consider runners, characters that can move to another slot on your stage during your opponent's turn. This is a very popular ability on level zeros because they have a very good shot at surviving multiple turns and can also mess up your opponent's combat plans. To balance this, they often have low power. So signing against a more powerful battle opponent with a runner can be very beneficial. Even if your opponent lays down three powerful characters on the next turn, having a runner makes it difficult for them to utilize some climax combos and abilities because it messes up their combat math. Siding at zero can also play a part in denying your opponent important abilities that their level zeros may rely on, such as Queen Cuts or On Death Akatsuki's. In general, the level zero game can be a fragile and intense dance between two opponents and can often set the tone of the entire game. And since side attacking against zeros has almost no downside aside from not killing a battle opponent, 
it can be an important part of your strategic arsenal, so use it wisely. Alright players, this is where I'm going to wrap up this lesson. Hopefully this has cleared up some misconceptions, clarified the rules, and maybe even given you some helpful tips about side attacking. And remember, it's soul minus level. If you want a fun acronym, siding can SML, save my life. Side attacking and knowing how to use it effectively is one of the more finesse elements of Weish 4's gameplay, and it comes with knowledge and practice. So go out there and make some side attacks, but mostly don't. And as always, thanks for watching. Peace.